Oh my goodness, greetings from Somerville. Uh, first part two episode, which I didn't even know I was going to be doing. Ladies and gentlemen, um, <laughs> so so last episode I, I uh, was originally, I, I, well, my brother is with us today, our guest, a repeat guest, um, our only repeat guest, and now our first back-to-back guest. Practically a co-host. Practically a co-host. In fact, for this episode, I think about to be the host, I think I'm about to surrender the reins because we have a um, we have a we have a complaint. Uh, shall we call it a complaint? I don't know. I mean, we certainly had a sticking point the last time we did this podcast. It was supposed to be about the two Somerville bachelors who are now with women and settling down, and it turned out to be pretty much all about me, which I think we even mentioned at the end. <laughs> and so I I have not let that go, like a like a small dog on your pant leg. I have been mentioning that uh, many times, and I think I finally shamed you into um, doing uh, a podcast that maybe involves you and, and your relationship. Okay. Well, I will, uh, I will come clean. I will, I will be honest. You're right. Uh, it was not my intention going in. I wasn't trying to pimp you into simply talking about you, but as it, as it turned out, that episode was uh, to a large degree about you, your relationship. A large degree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all, all the degrees? Like 100% <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> about me. 360 degrees. Uh, okay, so here we are. I, I've, I've agreed to surrender. Uh, I'll say, okay, I'm, it, maybe I should not take the lead on this one. Perhaps you, um, my brother, who seemed to be fairly aggressively. <laughs> my brother. <laughs> Have we established that? I'm his brother. Yes. Steve. You, you, hello. Um, Hi. And what do you and, um, want to know? Well, I mean, I think we should start from the beginning like we did. You, you've had a, um, uh, a history of dating some very impressive women in relationships that didn't end up lasting. I've known a number of them. I found out recently, I, not all of them. <laughs> thanks, thanks, mom. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, but I have known, I have known a number of them, and I, uh, and I thought maybe um, you could, you know, let's give a little background here. What what happened? Why? <laughs> why, why? You you do one thing for a long time, like me, and then. And then now you're you're settling down with the lovely Kate, who I just recently met, uh, um, and she's she's just terrific. Ah, well, um, and also potentially a listener. So it was really terrific, <laughs> really <laughs> instantly one of my favorite people. Just a sweet, sweet spirit. Uh, yes, yeah, so you, I touche. Uh, I like you. I, I have been a very uh, a lifelong bachelor. I've met some, as you said, some great women, some wonderful women, some some very healthy relationships and then for one reason or another never quite settled down largely my career I would argue was always a sticking point you know it was it's unstable it's hard to know where you're going next or where your next job's coming from so it's kind of hard to maybe envision yourself settling down and being I don't know responsible well <laughs> <laughs> is that not <laughs> yeah. I mean Yes and no. There are certainly plenty of comedians who have settled down, true, and and been responsible. Yes, um, and we've so, had some on this. So very while podcast. I'm saying it's yeah, I've, I've heard actually people who have been married and um, so while I'm saying that's certainly a a contributing factor. I think you need to own it a little more. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying there's something about me, perhaps? Is well, that... Yeah, I mean, I spent 25 minutes saying it was something about me last time. <laughs> so so I, I think maybe, um, you know, just to set the stage, I think that, you know, what, what was it about relationships that, um, that were, you know, that makes this one different? <laughs> no, I mean... Well, you know, I never considered myself someone who had a... a, a I used to do two jokes, actually. I, I don't I have a fear of commitment. I have a fear of making the wrong commitment. Um, and then I also did that joke before that. that was, I, I, don't, I, I have a raging fear of commitment, and I don't even like to write in pen. Um, and, and so I guess when I look back, I do have a, a, a fear of... Um, or had, at least, a fear of... of, of <laughs> All right, yeah. I guess a fear of, of early on. <laughs> <laughs> you won't even commit enough to say you have a fear of commitment. 
can't even you can't even commit to not being able to commit. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more like um, pathological at this point. So what what uh, what are your other questions? So, no, I mean I think that clears it up. <laughs> I, I think all the listeners um, are certainly going to get the point there. So oh, so what's God. happened? Um. Well, I think you. Uh, I think it's a healthy process. I think you. Um, if anyone uh, would argue with that. No. Okay. Uh, you. You. You get in relationships, and you feel like you. Well, first of all, I'd say you learn from like life. You learn from every experience. You learn from you know the good and the bad, and and you take things from experiences that you like and want to replicate, and and things that you say, okay, let's avoid that happening again. So you get, I, I would argue, better at relationships as you get older and have more experiences. You actually get good at them for, through practice, which is, I, I think, true, through right? Through trial and error. Through trial and error, yeah. Like, is, is, with I anything mean, else, I agree with that. Yeah, you do anything in life, you're going to get pretty good at it for if you keep practicing it and, um, and, and keeping an open mind and learning from it. And you know, not thinking everyone else is crazy, but you have some faults of your own and you get to know yourself better and you get to know so so you're saying you're in a better place personally you're thank you you're you're matured through your experiences and you feel that you're ready now for a more committed relationship if i say yes to that is there a trick question that follows i'm or? not no i'm okay. not trying to trick you <laughs> okay this then is, yes definitely this isn't a gotcha broadcast <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's kind of your episode. Top, so I, well, yeah, except I'm not the one who can post it. So, <laughs> if uh, fair yeah, enough, if you don't like the way it goes, that's it. It, that's it. never sees the light I of day. Accidentally deleted it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think that's actually exactly right. You get better. You know what's more important to you. What you must have, can't have. You know, at least you, your filter gets cl- more clear. All right. Well, that was an interesting. I mean, you know what's more important to you. So at this yeah. point now. Um, a relationship and that sort of steady connection has has uh, gone up in your estimation. It's be, it's become more important than yes in your life to, to yes. have something like that. So and was it is, something that you were thinking about ahead of time, or did this sort of blindside you when you when you met Kate, the lovely Kate, um, <laughs> the lovely and beautiful, Kate. lovely, beautiful, very smart, fun, um, <laughs> interesting, yeah. Um, All the so, things she would say. So, but it was was it something that you had in the back of your mind that like you know I would like to meet the one, or did you did you meet Kate and just all of a sudden realize you know holy cow? Be, because in my experience, I wasn't necessarily thinking you know this is something that I need to find a, you know as a long term solution, um, and then and then it sort of it sort of snuck up on me. I said, wow, this is somebody I could see. Mm-hmm. You know, spending a, a really long time with. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that from me as well. I would say that I wasn't. I wasn't looking. They always say, you know, when when you're not looking, it comes along. But I was actually at a more point of not despair, but thinking maybe this is it. You know, I'm a stand-up comic. I'm on the road so much. It's who am I going to meet? You know, what what I mean, who am I even meeting in my regular travels to to that could possibly date. I'm mean, not in the same state for more than two weeks. I'm not, you know, it, it became like, maybe I'm just going to be alone. And I know a lot of comics who are, you know, they get older and that's it. You know, they just kind of back to life and they have a pad somewhere and then they travel a bunch and they have good friends. And it's just, you know, I was starting to think that way actually. And then out of nowhere, uh, one night, um, uh, we, yeah, I was in New York city kind of like, just like bummed. I was going to the shows at the comedy cellar and uh, I had messed around. Um, one of my comedy friends, a couple of people I know, were talking about this app, uh, Bumble, one of these dating apps. And that's never been my thing, a dating app. Um, and so, but I just, you know, I was kind of like, ah, I'm bored, I'm lonely, I'm going to these shows. We'll see. You know, I started messing around with the app. And I guess the one app that I didn't, it was the app, it's Bumble is special where people are having success because the woman has to contact you first. That's the big thing. Um, so, you know, some apps, if you match, then anyone could write anyone. But this one, the woman has to decide to contact the man once they match. And I didn't even understand why. I was like, I don't know why that, what is that thing? And then it turns out there's some guys who aren't such gentlemen out there and they send pictures of things or they... Uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty high percentage. Yeah, <laughs> or they badger and won't stop guys, writing yeah, and all yeah. that. Yep. Yeah, so I didn't know. But anyway, I was messing around and sure enough, well, we match and she sends me a note. Turns out we went to the same school, same college. And that was uh, with Notre Dame for all the people who know me, which is probably everyone who's listening. 
And um, so that was an instant, like, as my <laughs> my friend at the club, uh, my Jewish friend at the club that night, the comedian said to me, oh, it's like meeting a fellow Jew. You cut through the BS, you know? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah. So right away we had this great connection, this great thing. And, but, I will, so we're bantering back and forth and we skip, we go right past all the early BS, all the, you know, who, who are you, what's your deal? You meet someone online, you sometimes spend days or weeks vetting them before you even agree to, well, within 10 minutes, I'd give him my number. I'm like, look, we have things in common, people in common. You want to just text each other as opposed to write on this app. So we're texting, having a great back and forth. Um, again, just things in common, very comfortable. And I invite her to the show. I go, hey, I got a show at the Comedy Cellar. Kind of a cool thing to be able to say yeah, in New York City. You I'm know, I'm going to be up doing, telling jokes in 20 minutes. Exactly. You, you want to pop by, I can get you in. Come see me and be a rock star. Yeah, yeah. And she says, no. <laughs> <laughs> No thanks, I have plans. <laughs> also, a slick move. Not a bad move. I, no, can't do it. Now, I the rest of this story I will tell you is my version of the story. Okay, uh, yeah. And you now know Kate, so perhaps you'll have to, she'll give you a different version. Yeah. I get mad. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> This really is starting out. I mean, you can just see how it blossoms from here. <laughs> <It's really laughs> she won't come see you. Now you're angry. And I'm you don't even know her. You, <laughs> you've been texting her for 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm pissed. I'm angry at this woman. <laughs> and so, so I get aloof. And <laughs> <laughs> so far, it does sound healthy. <laughs> and I say, you know, I don't know what we say, but yeah, great. Okay. She does have, you know, having plans, dinner plans with friends, whatever it was. Great, have a good time, and she, I think she does some sort of you know text you after, or you want you know text me after, or you want to get a drink, something like that, and I go fat chance in my head, you know, no way, this you know, right. she missed her chance. That's it, she, she missed, missed the yeah. Michael train. The Michael train <laughs> that has been station. sitting in the station for twelve years alone. Yeah. <laughs> it just decided to leave now, <laughs> waiting for a passenger for a decade. <laughs> Finally, someone bought a ticket, and they're running a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's sorry. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> so, <laughs> choo choo. Yeah, there is no nine twelve. <laughs> it's eight fourteen or bust. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's cut to I do the shows. You know, she presumably she's out with her friends. Whatever. I don't know what's going on. Done with the show, still hanging out at the club. One of the great things about the Comedy Cellar is, you know, it's, they're very comic friendly. They want, they, we are, we're the stars there. They want us to be comfortable. They want our comics to hang. It's a great scene. A very, just, just great comics, the whole thing. Um, and so I'm hanging out there, and I don't text her. And I'm thinking about her, though. I'm like, you know, like, oh, man, what about that girl? But no, not, you know. And she's at dinner with her friends. I would later learn, and it's her friends who encourage her to text because I guess she'd been there mentioning like wow yeah I met this guy blah 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 and just so you're both sort of psychos like you're <laughs> you're mad at her because she won't come meet you because she already has plans and she's already talking about her new boyfriend <laughs> after ten minutes of texting <laughs> well I don't think her new boyfriend I think uh, I, I, but, I mean she's texting with a stranger online well, for ten minutes she's just, that's the topic of conversation that, with her girlfriend that's true who then. Throw her to the wolves. They're like, go. And, and, and actually, in, in fair, one a girl and a guy, a couple that her friends are her, but really the guy is very feminine. So um, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, on and I'm kidding, but let's be honest. You're one of the girls. Um, <laughs> I guess he's a listener. He's a listener. Um, yeah, I, I like him already. There, he's, oh, he's the best. I'm teasing you, man. Uh, so they say you got to text them. She texts me, and I get very excited. I'll be honest. I was, I was, my phone was in my hands. I get very excited. She texts, and right away, I engage. You go, oh, absolutely done. Shows are over, but... So the fury is dissipated. The fury is dissipated. Well, she, you know, she came running. She came, she caught the train. <laughs> <laughs> she... Holding on to her hat, her <laughs> shopping bags. <laughs> running down the tracks. Running down the tracks, she totally caught, without me. She caught the train. This does very much sound like your version. <laughs> <laughs> so we, so I start texting right away. There's a there's a, a bar in, in New York City that's uh, in between my apartment and a little pub, uh, Four Faced Liar, in between my place and the Comedy Cellar. And um, I, I, you know, I said, hey, why don't we meet for a nightcap there? So, you know, whatever. It's a Four Faced Liar. Four Faced Liar. <laughs> that's L A L I A R. Oh God, I never even thought of that. Yeah. All right. 
That's boy. We have a lot of episodes coming up. We have a lot of follow ups. Yeah, I don't a, know that this is going to be able to cover all of this. I say, would you like me to meet me at the Four Faced Liar? And that, by the way, you just touched a nerve because apparently on my dating profile, I had lied about my age. Um, so, and had I been honest, apparently, a, a, <laughs> and had I been honest, it was a I never would have met her because it wasn't out of her range so that she was willing to search and date. So. <laughs> So it's interesting that I suggested that. Yeah, I never even thought of that. Boy, she's going to be enjoying this right now. Yeah, all right. So it's built on a sham. <laughs> built on a lie. And it's, literally, it's I It's built on a lie with two psychos, one who's furious, <laughs> and the other who's talking about a guy she texted for five minutes. But because I was so... She liked me so much, I liked to no, think. I, no, I'm sure. I, I, I was so compelling online and via text. So I suggest this bar. I feel like we could probably sell this text exchange. Yeah, I, we made it like additional content. Believe me. Whatever this compelling text exchange was. Believe me. I have thought about some of our exchanges and thought until she had to delete our text chain because of her ch phone choking or something. Anyway. <laughs> that, that, was, that was more of a personal message. No, you don't say. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho... I'm saying let's meet at the Four Face. My comic friend, Greer Barnes, great New York comic, is sitting next to me. And I'm telling him what's happened. I'm giving him the play-by-play. -play and he just hits me. He goes, are you out of your mind? You're here at the Fat Black Pussycat. The, you know, top. That's the name of the bar. <laughs> Fat Black what Pussycat. What happened to the Four Face Liar? Four Face Liar is the bar I am told her we would meet at. The You're at the Fat Black Pussycat? I'm at the flat, fat, <laughs> fat Black Pussycat. Going to the Four Face Liar. <laughs> You see what a catch I am? <laughs> like the Comedy Cellar is the only normal place. <laughs> and the Fat Black is part of the Comedy Cellar. It's the bar they own, which is adjacent to their two other rooms on West 3rd Street. So it's the uh -huh. bar where comedians have a VIP table. We eat and drink for free. We do anything we want. We are, we are, VI, we are the, the Mad Hatter is a waiter. The, the talent. <laughs> So my heat kicks me. Goes, oh, you out of your mind? You are right now the king right here. You are a comedian at the cellar in your element, free drinks, VIP, whatever. And you're having. She mentions, "Can I bring my friends?" So smart of her. I'm not going to come alone. Can you mind if my friends tag along? I guess make sure this guy's not a psycho. Right. Um, you're not going to abduct her. Right. Right. And uh, so uh, he goes, you know, change. Have them meet you here. And I say, like, oh, what a power move that is. I don't think like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not a player in that way. But my buddy's like, oh no, you meet her here. Your turf. You're everything. So I tell her, meet me. Actually, would you mind coming here? And then I tell him it's crowded. It's a weekend, a Friday night. And I say, would you, you know, drop my name at the door and tell tell the doorman you're at the, you know, I'm at the VIP table. I do one of these just horrible, not me. Say you're with Michael Somerville and right. I told you to meet you at the VIP table. And she just texts back, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, not good me. <laughs> I'll get in on my own and I'll find you. <laughs> Oh, so she'll come to the bar, she'll but come. she's not dropping your name. Yeah, yeah, maybe I skipped a few exchanges. She okay. said, okay, great, we'll come there. And then I say, yeah, I'm sorry. Then I say, All yeah, right. okay, when you come, do well, this. I thought she was going to say, no, let's not change the venue. No, 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 I'm sorry. She agreed to the venue. She did not agree to the way she should enter the venue. She, she's going to get in on her own. She can get her own way, buy her own drink, and come over. But long story short, she she came, uh, she came, she came, brought her friends, and they were all amazing. Not only was she just funny, charming, personal, and I, like I said, I kind of felt like I knew her just because of the connections through school. Um, so a lot of that pretense. Did was you gone. feel like the friends were evaluating you? I felt like the well, the fun thing, Anand, who I think is probably listening right now, um, he's a huge comedy fan, and so he was just smitten by the whole thing. He was like, "Drop the name, let's go to the VIP table." <laughs> he, was, he wanted every part of this thing, and 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 then even better, he's a fan of Aziz Ansari, a comedian who's doing very well. And Aziz <coughs> is on Aziz, stage man. downstairs, so I said, "You want to go down and see Aziz?" Are you serious? You're going to bring me downstairs? <laughs> so I grab him. We go down, stand on the side, watch a little. I mean, the whole thing couldn't have looked better. So at this point, I'm just trying to, you know, impress the guy. Right. And you figure that, you know, I got and him. At the same time, establishing an impossible standard. <laughs> yeah, <that's how> I, <laughs> This is how I roll. My yeah, this is how I live. My typical Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> You're only wearing a tux. <laughs> Exactly. Um, yeah, no, exactly. I never want to see these people again because there's no way I can keep this up. Yeah, no, this, I can't this... top it. I can't <laughs> even match it. <laughs> but we have a drink. We, we chat. We get to know. And sure enough, it was, you know, and I will say one of those things that you just, 
You know, I will say I've never felt more comfortable with somebody in my life. And that right. was the one thing I realized right away. It's a very important sign when you, yeah. you're comfortable with someone right off the bat. So comfortable. And I've never off. been that comfortable with anyone. You have a few laughs. Definitely. All right. So Laugh. then, so then you, you part ways then that evening after we, the meeting? We do. We part ways. They take off the friend's trust and say, okay, you know, this guy's good. They're, you know, they're getting tired. They're going to peel off. And they do. And uh, we hang out for a little more, walk her back to her place. And both being Notre Dame graduates, uh, very strict Catholic rules at Notre Dame. Um, very absolute single-sex dorms, parietals, which right. means women have to be out of men's dorms by midnight and vice versa. If you, you get thrown out of school, if they get caught, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and so, you know, I, yeah, I didn't know what the rules were. You know, maybe invite it up or something. Nope. No, <laughs> you know, that's not happening. Very much a good night and, uh, you know, have each other's numbers and whatnot. But I will say, you know, texted immediately. I mean, you know, the next day and, and um, yeah, ever since I've traveled an awful lot. I've been gone most of the year, uh, which has been a bit of a challenge. Um, right. Well, uh, you're, you're jumping ahead. So, so you started texting. You guys knew there was a connection. You yeah. liked each other. Yes. Um, but now there's got to be an official first date. That was really more a meet. There's got to be a, the two of you decided to get together the next time. That is. And I think that's that's probably... Well, I mean, I hope because I brought it up. That's an interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a good story. There was an official first date, but it wasn't the next time I saw her. Um, she has a pretty busy, crazy job, and right. I uh, also travel. And then we have opposite schedules. She works a corporate job daytime or sometimes all day into the evening. Uh, I obviously come to life around 8 p.m. <laughs> and, you know, so, and <laughs> so your batteries are finally fully charged. Yeah, exactly. That's when I'm at my, you know, peak. Um, so we had a few times where we, and we hadn't even talked, we texted a bit, and finally it was almost a week later, it was the following Thursday, where I said, we might have called you, I haven't even like physically talked to you, you know, just been texting, which also is very modern, and again, I'm a little older, and so right. I'm used to, you know, you talk out to people. Out of her age range. It's, it's she, I was out of her age range, and I'm used to talking, you call someone, you call a girl, you ask her out, you chat with her. I wasn't used to someone who seemed to be fairly content just texting. And, it's, and I wasn't sure if she was or wasn't, but she didn't, you know. And finally I said, can I call you? And she was absolutely yes was the answer, which was nice. We finally spoke live almost she a finally week. finally got a yes out of her. Got a yes. <laughs> <laughs> finally she agreed to something. <laughs> you, after a week, you finally had a good idea. <laughs> that might have been my last or one. Or at least an acceptable one. <laughs> one she could roll with. It may have been. And uh, but so we, we wound up hanging out because of her crazy work schedule, working late, and the whole thing on her end. And then same with me, leaving town. Most of our, I said, you want to just try to meet up? You want to just grab something quick to eat? This and and it was two or three times we did that before I realized I should probably ask this woman on a proper date. And now in the back of all of this is, as you know, I was Jake Glamour's ma magazine's dating columnist. So. Right. Even though that was the now relationship you, guru, relationship guru, two million women a month listening to every word I had to say, and now while that's years ago, I still sometimes feel like there's a, a bar or an expectation of this guy knows how to date. How to date? Yeah, he knows how to date, and he's, he should do things correctly. The world is watching because, as you well know, when you're chatting up with a woman, all her friends are watching. They had Googled me, searched me up and down. There's not a thing in the world they didn't know they about me. They don't know. And they're getting every, – every interaction is getting sent to them. Everything. I mean she's sharing every Screenshots of, of text exchanges, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. yeah Did, I are. didn't know that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but now, should... conversely, your brother with a very close relationship, I know about her. Did not know she existed. I never knew about her until I found out she was going to Hawaii <laughs> <laughs> to, to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, who? <laughs> that is true. So, yeah, men do not share information quite as freely. Not as much. We don't chat as openly. Um so I decide I got to bring her on a date and I want to make it a fun date. And I wanted to, we both live not far from each other. Didn't know, coincidentally, but not far from each other at all uh, in New York City. And so I wanted to find a fun new place that I hadn't been, I hope she hadn't been for, for dinner. Well, I, uh, at the Four Faced Liar one night, I stop in and I'm telling my friends there all about this nice young lady I met and I'm looking for a spot to bring her. And my one buddy goes, he's got an idea. He knows the place. It's the perfect place. It's around the corner, and it's this eclectic, odd place where they have tchotchkes and bobblehead things, and there's the guy, the owner makes everything, and he looks at you and decides what to eat. Bobbleheads are a selling point. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's just this, 
you know, odd. No, and it he, sounds lovely. And he goes, just you know, be, just don't wear anything nice because you're gonna leave smelling like the place. And I was like, what does that mean? He goes, no, you just you know, there's a lot of smoke and everything. So I don't know what to expect. I don't off the top of my head remember the name, but I will think of it. Um, and sure, I decide I'm gonna take her out. I ask her out on a date. I had a proper date, and I and I we bring her to this place. And I was under the impression if I dropped this guy's name, that just, you know, the back door opened and the world uh, came, you know, that kind of thing. He said, mention me, you know, because I go in all the time, tell him, you know, I, Jimmy sent you. And I go, no, fantastic. And I go in and I just... And, and you didn't yeah. learn from her example Did not. about not, <laughs> not dropping names because it, <laughs> it Unlike probably her, I said, yes. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I'll drop your name. I will drop a name in a second. Here we go. Uh-huh. Jimmy sent me. I go and first of all, I take her early. I think it might be like six thirty or seven p.m., which in New York City is very early for dinner or a date. Like I don't right. even, I don't know. I just like seven o'clock the afternoon, eight, right? Right? Yeah. The place is empty, like a bit, like just opening. Like they're not even. I don't think people go until midnight to eat dinner there. So we walk in, it's all, and there's a little bar, and it is a, it's a neglected place. It feels like an old kind of weird den with strange decorations, and it's the the food. I couldn't tell what the food was going to be. And he was, oh, it's a little of everything. They'll make you some. You know, sushi or pig's feet, they'll make you some this or that. It just, you know, it sounds like a weird... Sushi or but, pig's feet. Yeah, but trust me, it's good. Yeah, no. And, I... and so we walk in and I just... <laughs> the woman approaches. And she goes, hello. I go, hello. I said, Jimmy sent me. And she goes, okay. Where would you like to sit? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, see what Jimmy's name well, does? Jimmy, we get yeah. our choice of tables. Our choice of anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, there's no one in the place. Literally, no, not one other customer. Not a big place. So there's a little bar over there, like a little, looks like a little sushi bar with a screen and bobbleheads and little character Disney characters. Bobbleheads again. It's just they're everywhere. And Disney characters. There's an A Rod thing, and so I said, "What's at the bar?" That's usually you know on a date, you know, a little right. interaction with the, the the bartender slash chef. It looked like the whole thing was happening behind oh, all right. behind there. I go, all right, that's kind of like let's saddle up and have a little fun. He sees us, runs over, and puts in a Disney film. There's a VCR with a TV on the bar, and he just oh, and he puts in a Disney film for us, like a well, one of, like one of those animated Disney a, films. an animated Disney film. Yeah, and then leaves. He goes, okay, they'll have a little watch. So we're watching the Disney. Was film. he babysitting? <laughs> <laughs> So the woman comes you guys over want cookies? and says, you would, you, some cookies? would you like a beer? And we both, you know, within say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we had never done anything but, you know, been out quickly. And all of a sudden I was on a date date. And I think she was nervous. I was nervous. We were both kind of having this moment of like, do we have anything in common? Like we've clicked before late night banter in a comedian club. Right. But you've never had to spend this concentrated time this just is staring at each other. Trying one to come on up with stuff one. To talk about. What are we going to talk about? Yeah. So the bar, the bartender slash owner slash chef, whoever comes, you know, finally comes over, and uh, you know, and I go again. Jimmy sent us because <laughs> it worked out so well the first time. <laughs> and he goes, "What would you like?" <laughs> Well, you know, Jimmy said, and I start trying to do that. Like, you know, hey, you know, you tell us, you tell us, you know, you tell us. And meanwhile, Kate's sitting next to me, starting again, like shifting. She's like, well, maybe we'll just read the, you know, why don't we just read the menu and then we can decide. Why don't we just read the menu and order something? something. (laughs) I think Jimmy's got it. No, no, Jimmy said not to read the menu. (laughs) Jimmy said. (laughs) So thankfully, she finally kind of steps up. And like I've got, you know, I'm on my second beer, you know, <laughs> within nine seconds, you know, just check, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy's gonna do this. Jimmy's gonna take care of this. They're gonna. Jimmy said, "Drink Blue Moon." <laughs> just... Kate, thankfully, says, "Why don't we just order a few appetizers?" You didn't show me the handshake. And take it from there. <laughs> and so thankfully, she does. She goes, "I like this, this. I'm not eating pig's feet. I like that. I'm not eating pig's Let's feet. Let's get I these two her. things." And uh, God bless her. The night from there went better. It went, we ate. We started to laugh. We realized it was not. Um, to anyone but us to order more food um we had i think wound up just eating like 11 appetizers because we couldn't figure out we couldn't really figure out the menu and we wound up being like a lot of appetizers no real entree but enough to fill what's us wrong up. with jimmy jimmy <laughs> this bobblehead place you can't even you two are both brilliant not brilliant but you know intelligent adults yeah, we couldn't you can't read the menu you can't read the menu it was weird it was it's in like a different language the guy's a and... chef and a bartender and an <laughs> owner and he's sweeping the floor and we did smell like it when we left we smelled like full on just smoked like like you ever been like near cooking like cooking smoke exactly right? exactly we did smell like that all our clothes our hair everything did you warn her about that ahead of time I or? did not okay I so did not she probably wore something nice for a first date she, I'm sure she did she which, looked very good yeah. yeah which now has to be dry clean. <laughs> yes. And it has to wash her hair. But that was our first date. 
I can't believe we almost skipped it. I, we almost skipped the first date. Um, but you're so, right. Anyway, but, you're but the right. connection was made at that point. It was solidified. Um, and so now you, getting back to you, realized that this was somebody that had potential. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes. that um, now, so, so we continue forward. And you spend a lot of time out of town, and you guys are communicating, and I assume you're having, you're seeing each other more, you know, having other dates when you are around. So at what point does it start to slip into, this might be more than just another girlfriend, this might be something, you know, substantive, or, or long term, even... Well, hey, this has been greetings from Somerville, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for jo- <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us. I didn't even say something you could commit to. I worked around it. <laughs> that, that is well. Now, interestingly, you're right. You touched on some things that are probably worth mentioning. I travel a lot, and this past particular uh, summer, when I was traveling a lot, I was gone a lot. And so we had this like great, you know, date and fun time. And wow, this person's amazing. And then I'd literally leave for two, three, four weeks. And so text a bit, um, FaceTime. She's a FaceTimer, which uh, most guys are not. You and I have talked about this. I talked about it with her. Yeah, yeah. Discuss it. <laughs> not a FaceTimer. I, I just wanted to get that out there early on. Uh, I, I was the first time she did it. She didn't even warn me. She just did it one night. And I, much like you, just didn't answer. I was like, I don't yeah. know what this is about, but I'm not picking up. No, I didn't answer yeah. either. Yeah. That is the craziest thing, FaceTiming. Mean, how do you just invade someone's life like that? And you, you just, I mean, without thought. Without it's thought. Just, yeah. yeah. Show me where you are, what you're doing, what you look like. I mean, just, just like, that's invasive. Well, I think it's the the selfie Instagram. I know, but text was going the other way. Like, we all, as men, we love text because we don't have to call anymore. We do love them, unless does she have an iPhone? Yes. Uh, so the only problem with iPhone text is that you get the little bubble when you start to write something. When you start to write. And so in a new relationship, you have to think about what you're going to say because you can't keep changing your mind. I write it in uh, email. I go to email and write my response yeah, and then practice Google it. Google Docs. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and then cut and paste it. And then that's exactly what I do. I can't tell you in my drafts how many uh, old texts, starting texts I've got. Yeah. I just didn't delete it. Well, yeah. a, when you're in a new relationship... Um, like I started dating Kathy and she didn't have an iPhone. I was so That's happy. the best thing ever. I was like, thank God. It's like dating dad. <laughs> well. <laughs> I mean, in that way. <laughs> not even, no. <laughs> I, we're going to just, I'm going to reject that. Uh, just not, we're never going to look right, for yeah. No parallels. Um, so anyway, so you're traveling. Um, you guys have, have made this connection. And, um, but by the time you're doing this traveling, you're already pretty much committed to a serious relationship that i don't know i i would say i mean yeah it was i was yes the answer is i was certainly interested in her i wasn't interested in anyone else i was i was thinking about her we it, i loved chatting with her i loved hearing from her but i was gone a bunch i hadn't spent a lot of actual time with her actual hours i mean literally like a, you know <laughs> right hours and there's her. no substitute for spending time with people yeah it's... and so you know you feel good about someone but exactly you know physical time and like i said you know the beginning of that first date boy sitting there staring at each other like oh shoot is this are we only fun at midnight in a bar is this uh, you know right no sun, you wouldn't be the first people that... the sun's still up where's this going but i knew i liked her i knew i liked seeing her and i had i was in alaska performing for two weeks and i was starting uh i had a day off between the time i was done in alaska and i was starting in vegas a Two day, I had one day off in the middle, and I really just wanted to fly to Vegas and go. Oh, I'm exhausted. I've been on tour. I've been on the road. Just go. I, no, you're working your two hours a week. Yeah, doing my like, <laughs> hour forty five a week. And you're so tired. Yeah, I'm about to fly cross country after your cruise. Yeah, well, that you know, taxing. Uh-huh. Um, That's why people take it. it no, I meant there was tax because it was international. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone comes back exhausted from their vacation. Exactly. Their Alaskan I work on them. Have you ever had to sign CDs? <laughs> For 20 minutes after a 45-minute show? Yeah, like five minutes. They don't uh, buy a lot of them. Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's not no, a lot. No, but you got to talk to everyone who does. And then they know you, and you got to talk to them when they see you on the ship. And mm-hmm. So I finish up the gig, and, and I'm supposed to be in Vegas, literally, you know, a day and a half later. And I have, I just want to go to Vegas, just straight to Vegas, right. go to sleep, relax, have a day off. But... There's this woman in New York who has caught my fancy, and I decide to go ahead and fly back to New York and to see her for one night. Um, and 
<laughs> she didn't say no. She didn't say no. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You told her you were going to do it. It wasn't a surprise. Well, I, I dangled the carrot. You two, one of my favorite band, was uh, at Madison Square Garden that night. So I thought I would sweeten the deal again, acting like the guy that I am not in a lifestyle I can't maintain. Right. Why don't we go? I'll, I'll get us tickets I, to you 2 I'm going to fly from Seattle to New York so we can see you 2 before I go to Vegas. That's exactly, actually exactly yeah. what happened. I can't do it again for another 10 years. I'm still paying off the tickets on my right. <laughs> But that's exactly what I did. I flew from Seattle to New York City, took her to U2, took her out all night, and then the next day got on a plane to Vegas, and she limped to now a meeting. Now, at the U2 concert, did you tell them that Jimmy sent you? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy sent me. So that was, and I have to say, when I first saw her, I hadn't seen her for a while, and I didn't, still didn't feel like I knew her that well when I first saw her that night to meet up for the concert. That's when I kind of said, oh, that was, this was worth it. Like, this is exciting. Now, she has an interesting thing. She absolutely loathes public affection. And I'm not a fan of public affection at all, like kissing, making, you know, that right. kind of no, thing. But I'm a so. touchy-feely guy. You know, like, I like to hug. I'll hold hands. I'll kiss. She doesn't even right. want to do that. She wants no part. You look like, we look like business partners in public. She just, so, so I was all it excited. It looks like you guys bought the ticket before the divorce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is probably our last event. Yeah, you're both going. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what it was. <laughs> and so I am just, you know, I'm an affectionate person. I'm a touch. I'm a hugger. I hug friends. I, you know, guy friends I hug. You know, throw some people up, but I just, it's who I am. I like that. Right. And she was, I mean, it was so, I'm just sitting there pawing at her all night, like, trying to like, just like, not, you know, inappropriate, just like, God, oh, I want to touch this person. I like right. this person. I want to hug this person. No, wanna... like when a dog is trying to get you to pet it. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, putting your nose under her hands. Yeah, yeah, just like, oh, you're, I'm here, I'm seeing you, I'm leaving yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, she want to scratch behind my ear. <laughs> well, she didn't want to scratch anything. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's TMI. I just, you well, know. No, you took it too far. Okay. I had a cute dog analogy. Well, to, <laughs> the answer to your question, though, is, and I take off again. I leave again the next day. I'm gone for another 10 days. And coming up in the big thing of all this, this is now July. Um, I'm leaving again for two weeks. I'm coming back for maybe a week, week and a half. And then I'm leaving for 10 weeks. And so at that point, I'm, I'm genuinely worried. I like this person. And how long is someone going to hang out and be like, this guy's never home, but he's fun when he is. And so I We know from experience, not indefinitely. No, not they don't wait forever. No. And There's something about being on the road ten months out of the year that yes. puts the kibash on relationships. And not to mention, you know, they not they, you know, as a general, but a lot of many people, and sometimes correctly, think that, you know, the life of a comic is this crazy road life. And some entertainers do have very entertaining road lives. I do not. I'm not a rock star. I just, that new joke of mine is if TMZ ever finds, ever, if TMZ ever has a picture of me next to a white powdery substance, it will be donuts. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just, you know, but I think they think, like, well, what's he up to on the road? Can I, what's this guy doing? Who's he with? You know, and they, so they have trouble believing that I'm watching Sports Center and eating chocolate cake in, in my hotel room um but anyway i'm lamenting that sounds amazing it's, it's, it's the best thing ever it's, <laughs> it's, it's the best watching sports thing. in a hotel room eating chocolate eating cake. chocolate cake yeah it's so good it really i recommend <laughs> that really does sound almost more fun than anything else you could do it's, on the road it really is yeah. yeah yeah and it's innocent and it's wonderful um and thanks to face uh, facetime she knows i'm not lying she's <laughs> here's the chocolate that's cake that's right the facetime pays off that's it right there um, but I <laughs> it's on your face. It's it's all over. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> you're like, oh, you've been eating chocolate cake. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have this ten week trip coming up. Eight of those weeks are in Hawaii, and I'm lamenting. Oh, I hate to leave. I this and that, and I'm also bummed. I've been inviting my family, you, mom and dad, all you know, to Hawaii. Now everyone threatens to visit. No one ever visits. And there's a quiet moment, and she goes, oh, "I'll visit," and I was like. Really? She's like, I'll, I'll visit Hawaii. <laughs> yes. She's like, I'm, I'm with you. We don't know each other that long, but if you're telling yeah. me you want company in Hawaii. It's just another standard you can't live up to. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we keep saying you can't top the last one, and you keep topping it. <laughs> exactly. You're like, VIP at the Comedy Cellar. Now I'm flying across the country to go to a U2 concert. Now I'm going to bring you out to Hawaii. You, to Hawaii. <laughs> you know this all ends in my apartment, right? <laughs> like, this, i got to drop the mic and just walk the away from this room. The bathroom down the hall. The bathroom is in the hallway. 
So I say, yeah. And in a way, I was thrilled. I mean, it's, it does. I know it's Hawaii. I know it's hard to look for sympathy. But it must be a little bit stressful because you guys haven't established that relationship pattern or gotten into that groove. At all. And now you're going to be on a ship in Hawaii for, she came out for a week? Full time. She came out for over nine days. Not only the full week that I work, but then we, she stayed an extra two days. So... Um, it was, I told her to. I'm like, look, we're gonna go back to Maui. We're gonna do a little more in Maui. It's a great, right. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I also so that's some, yeah, that's a real litmus right. test for this. That's what we figured. It's be, you know, break, make or break. It's just like this is it. And uh, and then she was just amazing. She was just like the most fun. I've never laughed so much in my life. I've never had more fun. I've never seen someone shift. She's a hard worker. I've never seen someone go from work mode to I'm on vacation mode in my, like so quickly and so thoroughly in my life. People texting her, put her phone away, she didn't care. You know, I'm, I'm away, I'm doing this. And I would oh, say... Oh, so she didn't work at all. She didn't work at all. And she told I happen to know about her that she is a very hard worker. Insane worker. Um, her, and not her, just a hard worker, but she she looks for opportunities to work. Wants to work, it loves seems. to work, and it's can't, it's perfectionist, cannot stop working until she thinks it's been done perfectly or it's you know pencils down you gotta you know hand it in right and she her co-workers she's worked there 11 years at this company her co-workers were concerned because she's never taken that long off in 11 years she's never taken that and they thought they thought she was, might be sick thought some sick of someone in the family is everything okay yeah and, and when she does take off it's a day or two here and she works she goes to visit her family and she just works nine of the hours from home you know at the end this is the first time she said, i'm not working i'm not answering the phone i'm so not arguably you're a good influence i am a wonderful influence Influence. Because you have to take a break. <laughs> you have to. And not to mention and, Hawaii is you know, six hours different. Kudos to her for really taking the break. Really and took not it. not trying to work from Hawaii. No, really took it. And you know, part of it is where it transit to different islands. And then by the time you get in at 10, 11 Hawaii time with a six hour difference, it's already 5 p.m. in New York. A lot of the work that a lot of the issues or questions by the time she had cell phone access were already settled and started. Done. Yeah. So she kind of had a little help that way. But no, she went. Full on. Um, well, good for her. Yeah, and that was where we had some. There was I've mentioned the hike. There was there was a few experiences. Was the hike, capital yeah. T, capital H, capital T, capital like H. The catch. <laughs> there was that was, she she calls it a walk. Uh, I, it, it was a walk. It, it was a hike. Um, <laughs> you know, but that was yeah. Then those nine days, and you came out going, wow, this is someone who again never more comfortable, never more. Hurt. You know, relaxed and and just had a great time. Didn't realize how funny she was. That was the other thing. I, you know me. I gotta laugh. I don't care how beautiful right. you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care. You know. But to me, well, sense to me, of humor is, sense is of really humor. paramount. Gotta it's be very funny important. and gotta be able to laugh at yourself and be silly. Just, right. It's just you know, you know, in our lives, we know we've had good and bad times, and we we and laughed. We laughed through all of them. Through all of them. It's, and it's probably so, appropriate. But that puts us, we're already at 42 minutes, so I think for the first outing, does that, does that at least satiate some of... It doesn't actually answer the one question I asked. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> was, you know, like, what, what's different this time with you, um, but it certainly paints a very lovely picture of how you two got together, and, um, and we're, we're all really happy that Hawaii went well. <laughs> um, Tough place to be happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know, uh, so many couples fall apart <laughs> in paradise when nobody's working. <laughs> that just that really is a relationship crusher. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean that's if this is going to be a part one, I'm totally comfortable with that. Okay. <laughs> so this is already part two of your part one. So now we're on. So I feel like mine was standalone. I maybe it was a part little more. Two A. I don't know. I mean, I'm a little more succinct. I have a better economy with with my <laughs> my stories. Um, I feel oh, like I, I covered all mine in twenty five minutes. Oh wow! Okay, so you're um, saying but I'm, this I'm is... rambling on my own podcast. No, no, it's all been great. Um, well, I want to thank you for coming on your podcast. Thank you for having me on your podcast. On my podcast. <laughs> Greetings from Somerville. Yes, hosted by hosted by co host really by Michael and Stephen Somerville. Guest I think you should host. probably get used to this. Okay. Um, I think this is going to be a very popular episode. Okay, if I post it. And um, and then, yeah, if there's a demand. And I, I would like to say this to the listeners. Absolutely reach out. Tell Michael that we want some more. Um, we want to know what happened after Hawaii up until to now. It's Hawaii some time ago, for those of you who don't follow him, uh, his schedule closely. Which, yeah, it's not that long ago. Um, 
it's it's long enough that there's <laughs> <laughs> there's there's other big adventures I'm sure in the interim. So, but reach out to Michael. You know, don't just rate him. Don't just uh, don't just review him. But actually, but you know, do like, rate, and review on iTunes. You can absolutely do those things. But also reach out to him. I mean, you can get in touch with him and and tell him what you like and what you want to know. Greetings from Somerville at gmail dot com. That's excellent. Yeah. Greetings at Somerville at gmail.com. Give them a drop them a line. Um, do it anonymously. Create a, a fake account if you want. But let us know what else you'd like to know um, about Michael, his past, his current, and his potential future. I hope you guys all enjoyed my last episode with my brother here. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.